Yeah, that's right, we are back. <laughs> this week has been pretty exciting because I've been working on the board slide. Okay, the board slide to fakey. Let's see what we're talking about. Approach the ramp with plenty of speed. Carve up the ramp on an angle. Come up onto the coping, clear the front wheels, swish the board across so it's 90 degrees to the coping. Slide for as long as you can and then pop those front wheels back over the coping, bend the knees and hopefully ride away. <laughs> now I've given these a go in the past on the pull coping and it's always come out not quite so good. And I think the reason for this is I wasn't used to the amount of slide and also my rock fakey wasn't good enough to facilitate coming back in. So I think before starting these board slide to fakies, it's good to have a nice solid rock to fakey, especially on a sort of pool coping style setup. Now I was inspired to try these board slides on the coping during a session with the dudes. There was a fair bit of carnage, but luckily the dudes were on hand to cheer me on. Let's talk about some of the issues I was having. The first one was coming up onto the coping with not enough speed and just stopping dead. The remedy for this was to go faster and most importantly carve across the transition on an angle and then as the wheels cleared the coping, pivot the board so it was 90 degrees and that would facilitate the slide. Once I got up into that sliding position, there were a few issues that reared their head. Number one, was putting too much weight forwards and too much pressure on the toe side of the board and that just led the board to dig into the coping and then I ran out whew, onto the other side. The opposite issue was leaning too far back on the slide and digging in my heels and that whew, led me to whoosh out, oh my gosh. So just to start with, when I was getting the slides, I was trying to find a happy medium of being over the board with equal toe and heel pressure not leaning too far back, but also anticipating the speed of the slide by leaning a little bit further forward than I thought I needed to. The next issue was introduced by the fact I was trying to do a slide around curved coping. So as I got up on the coping, the centrifugal force tried to push me up onto the deck. To counteract this centrifugal force, I found I needed to lean back inside the ramp and that allowed me to track around with my weight against the coping. Once I started to get a fairly consistent slide around, the next issue was coming back in and oh, I made a little bit of a meal of this. I found it really scary to try and commit, clear those front wheels and come back in. And on the ones that I did commit to, I found I just oh, skittled off the back. I worked out the reason I was coming off the back of the board and falling down onto the flat bottom was that I was over committing back in to the transition and this was because my body was already tracking at an angle because of the curve coping. So if I committed more, it meant that I was too committed on the way back in and I just came off the back of the board. So for the one that I made, I didn't really change my body position inside the ramp. I just flicked my front foot up to clear those front wheels and then kept my knees bent and tried to ride it out down that transition. It was a pretty sketchy make holding on for dear life down that waterfall certainly didn't look too pretty, 
but I was delighted to have got one and that brought session one to a conclusion. For session two, the goal was simple. See if I could go back and make a load more, try and introduce a little bit of consistency and experiment with getting a longer and smoother grind and also get a little bit more confident with clearing those front wheels and riding it away. managed to make a few in session two and through that process I refined a few of the key points. First up I refined my line on the way in. I took a little bit of hip and I found that gave me a little bit more speed, shot me up onto the coping and at that point I could get into my sliding position. I found a thing that helped the slide to track round was if I got in my sliding position and then locked my body with my knees slightly bent and my shoulders 90 degrees to the coping. That helped everything track round and then when I felt the slide starting to come to the end, I could just fall back in, clear those front wheels and ride away. Taking a bit more speed in did introduce a new issue, which was not clearing the front wheels because I was really approaching the coping on an angle and that front truck whew, caught onto the coping in a sort of willy grind and that was quite scary. To remedy this, I just dialed my angle of attack back a little bit and made sure I was positive to clear the front wheels as I came into that slide. I still felt I could do a little bit better, so the goal for session three was simple, see if I could get the longest slide possible. Okay, for session three, trying to get a longer slide, I found as soon as I got that slide position locked in and consistent, it was just a case of going as fast as I dared and also angling across and carving in with the most angle possible. This allowed me to carry that speed across the coping. I found the optimal position for the coping on the rails was more towards the back truck and this allowed me to stand up over the board and I have to say, whew, I wore a bit of a groove as soon as I started getting consistent with that. I think for me that rails definitely helped with the slide, but I was interested that my mate Pai Kasari used a board with no rails and he was getting lovely, long, smooth slides, no problem at all. I found the extra speed was creating more centrifugal force and that was pushing me up onto the top of the ramp. At that point, the front wheels dug in and I ran off the front 
had a few sketchy ones where I was running right round with my feet on the coping. And I tried to avoid that as I felt that introduced the opportunity to get the dreaded whoo, twisty ankle going. I found in terms of bailing, if I came to a stop on the coping, I could twist round and either run it out or use my knee pads to slide out. I think the most common issue I had was coming back in and getting slung out to the flat bottom. So in terms of safety gear, I rely pretty heavily on my back arm elbow pad and also my back leg knee pad. Overall, I was pretty stoked to get some fairly long board slider fakies on the pool coping. My goal for next time is to experiment with my line, maybe come straight up over that hip, carry all that forward momentum into the slide, Jeff Grosso style, <laughs> see how many blocks round I can carry it. I also fancy trying the board slide rock and roll. So coming out of the board slide with the rock and roll, so not coming back in fakie, but just riding away regular. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. We've now hit 10,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody. Whew, what a cracking community. You can also follow me on Instagram at John Bishop Skate. As ever, my name's been John Bishop and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate.